Crocodiles look like the product of a bygone era. Armored, toothy archosaurs. People often think these animals have been alive, unchanged since the time of the dinosaurs. Some even just call them dinosaurs. Of course, they are not, nor have they remained the same since the time of the dinosaurs. Crocodilians actually were once a very diverse group that inhabited many niches. Today I will be talking about a number of extinct crocodilians to show how diverse the group was. But first, let's talk about modern crocodilians. Modern crocodilians are large, solidly built, lizard-like reptiles. They have long, flattened snouts, laterally compressed tails, and eyes, ears, and nostrils at the top of the head. They swim well and can move on land in a high walk and a low walk. Smaller species are even capable of galloping. Their skin is thick and covered in non-overlapping scales. They have conical, peg-like teeth and a powerful bite. Their four-chambered heart is somewhat like birds. Modern crocodilians include alligators, crocodiles, gharials, and caimans. Crocodilians in the modern sense all have the same relative body plan. Gharials are the most unique of the extant crocodiles and are specialized for catching fish. But overall, extant crocs share a relatively uniform body plan. This is why it is easy to say that they haven't changed since the Cretaceous. In the Cretaceous, many crocodilians inhabited the very same niches, sitting on the edge of the water waiting for prey, or catching fish. But during this time, some of the most interesting crocodiles existed. First, let's talk about Stomatosuchus. Stomatosuchus is an extinct Stomatosuchid Neosuchian from late Cretaceous Egypt. It grew up to 10 meters or 33 feet in length. What makes this animal so interesting is its strange mouth. Its flattened skull had a long, flat, lid-like snout which was lined with small, conical teeth. The mandible may have been toothless and may have supported a pelican-like throat pouch. The only specimen consists of a partial skull and two caudal vertebrae. Its mouth is unprecedented among other crocodilians and this is why this ancient crocodile was given the name Stomatosuchus inermis, which means weaponless mouth crocodile. What Stomatosuchus ate remains unknown for certain, but one theory is that it ate fish. Stomatosuchus could either gulp water or wait for fish to pass by and then suck in water with its throat muscles drawing the fish inside. It could then close the upper jaw and constrict its pouch and squeeze the water out while the upper teeth prevented the fish from escaping. This is a similar way to how many whales filter feed. Restudying the skull with modern techniques may have shed more light upon how Stomatosuchus lived. But unfortunately, the only known specimen of Stomatosuchus was destroyed along with the rest of the Munich Museum by the Allied bombing raid in 1944. That Allied bombing raid destroyed so much. Screw the Allies. Just kidding, of course. Thanks for preserving Western democracy. It was worth a few fossils. So we don't know exactly what it ate, but wow is it interesting. This is a testament to show that, yeah, crocodilians have changed and diversified in many ways since the time of the dinosaurs. Just now we are stuck with a lot of basic, boring crocodilians. Next, let's talk about Caprosuchus, the boar croc. Caprosuchus is an extinct genus of Maha Jangasuchid crocodiliform. It is known from a single, nearly complete skull collected from Lake Cretaceous Ekar formation of Niger. The name means boar crocodile, in reference to its unusually large caniniform teeth, which resemble that of a boar. The original description estimated the entire animal to be 6 meters or 19.7 feet in length. It possesses three sets of tusk-like caniniform teeth that project above and below the skull, one of which in the lower jaw fits into the notches in the upper jaw. This type of dentition is not seen in any other known crocodiliform. Another unique characteristic of Caprosuchus is the presence of large rugos horns formed from the squamosal and parietal bones that project from the skull. Smaller projections are also seen in the closely related Mahajangasuchus. 
Caprosuchus is thought to have been primarily, if not exclusively, a terrestrial predator. Evidence for this behavior includes a positioning of orbits laterally and somewhat anteriorly, which suggests an overlap in vision. This is unlike many other Neosuchians, including extant crocodilians, in which the orbits are positioned dorsally as an adaptation to aquatic predation, where the head can be held underwater while the eyes remain above the surface. Additionally, support for terrestrial predation can be found in the teeth and jaws. The enlarged caniniforms are sharp-edged and relatively straight, unlike the fluted, subconical, recurved teeth of aquatic crocodiliforms. Because the retroarticular process of the lower jaw is so long, it is likely that the jaws were able to open quickly with a large gape, allowing for the opposing teeth to clear one another. This would have helped it actually be able to bite things with such large, saber-like teeth. There's a lot more to be said about this animal, but that is for another video. The last crocodilian worth mentioning is the bizarre Armadillosuchus. Armadillosuchus is an extinct genus of sphagosaurid crocodilomorph. Sphagosaurids share a number of mammal-like features in their teeth and jaws, although they are unrelated to mammals. Armadillosuchus is especially mammal-like in the way it had heavy body armor characterized by flexible bands and rigid shields that covered its back, less like the traditional osteoderms that line the backs of most crocs, and more like that of the modern armadillo. The skull is small with a relatively short snout. The teeth are very unusual. Rather than the normal homodont dentition of most crocodiliforms, it had large curved teeth like canines, protruding front teeth that resembled incisors, and conical teeth with shearing edges filling the remainder of its mouth. This is common among all sphagosaurids, which often have mammaliform teeth and jaws despite being only distantly related. It is hypothesized, therefore, that Armadillosuchus was omnivorous. Armadillosuchus also had long claws on the front legs, which might have been used for digging or unearthing buried food sources such as roots or small mammals. Like an armadillo, its body armor would have worked well for protection, but unlike an armadillo, it also had a very vicious and dangerous bite due to its long canine teeth. These three vastly different crocodilians all existed in just the late Cretaceous alone. Yet creationists still ask why crocodilians have not changed in millions of years. The answer is, they have. This is yet another example of how ignorance is not evidence. There are plenty of other examples of diverse crocodilians like the terrestrial Quincana from only 40,000 years ago, or the giant Perosaurus from the Miocene, who was likely the biggest crocodilian of all time. I love the diversity that these three animals have shown. The crocodilian body plan is extremely effective and that is why they remain on the top of the food chain in modern times. It would be great if you could like and subscribe to the channel. I would certainly appreciate it. I have plenty other videos about ancient life, ancient man, and even history. Please go check them out, and have a nice day. See ya.